Pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts and minds of your faithful people on this sacred night. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus knew that the hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Three of the four Gospels all depict the Seder Passover Supper as our Lord begins to draw the comparison and the connections and to help those who are with him to understand that in fact he is the eternal sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and that what is foretold in the Passover in Egypt is in fact fulfilled in himself. But John doesn't choose to give us that narrative. He doesn't draw out Jesus' teaching to make that comparison. Rather, John instead decides to tell us about what happened just before. Right before the Passover supper, the Last Supper, John tells us about this extraordinary opportunity Jesus has to demonstrate His love for His disciples. Having loved His disciples who were in the world, He loved them to the very end. The theme of servanthood runs right through this passage. It is so evident right here in the middle of all that we're doing that we are called to understand the servant ministry. Jesus visibly shows them His love by getting up, taking off His outer garment, taking a towel and a basin, and beginning to wash His disciples' feet. The first thing we have to understand is that we must allow Jesus to serve us. The first time as a young youth minister, I knelt down to wash the group of teenagers that I was trying to demonstrate John 13 to, and I looked up and I saw their their faces and I began to wash their feet. I, I began to contemplate, my Lord kneeling and washing the grimy, dirty feet of his disciples. No wonder Peter resisted, right? No wonder Peter said, Lord, you won't wash my feet. There's no way. There is something within us that resists that level of service. Perhaps it's that we resist that level of need. And yet, Jesus makes it very clear to Peter that unless he allows him to wash his feet, he can have no part in us. We all must allow our Lord Jesus to serve us. And in fact, he has served us. The washing of the feet is but a foretaste of what Jesus will do in the next day when he takes the cross of Calvary and goes all the way to Golgotha and there lays down his life for the sins of the world. He, through his atoning death on the cross, is the greatest service anyone could possibly do. But to make it tangible, to give them something to hold on to, Jesus chooses to demonstrate this servanthood ministry there to they would, that they would understand that this service is for you and you must allow, allow me to serve you in this way. Mark chapter 10, Matthew chapter 20, Philippians 2, all these scriptures tie together the servanthood ministry of Jesus to the cross. Mark says in chapter 10, verse 45, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Paul puts it this way in Philippians chapter 2. 
Jesus, who though in form God did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and by being born in the likeness of men and being found in the human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Christ becomes our supreme servant. And the connection of the washing of the feet in the upper room on this last sacred night reminds us of how great a service He has done for us by giving up Himself in our place. We must let Him. If you don't get that first step, then the second one doesn't make a lot of sense. Because you see, once you understand that first we must let Jesus serve us, the next thing follows right after that we are called to emulate His lifestyle and serve others. What does it look like to wash the feet of your brothers and sisters within this parish family, within the community around you, even for those who would call themselves your enemies. Oh yes, Jesus washed even Judas' feet. And He calls us to emulate Him in that ministry. If Jesus had asked any of those disciples to wash His own feet, no problem, Jesus. Happy to do it. You're my rabbi. You're my teacher. You are the Messiah we're becoming to believe. But to wash each other's feet, Well, that's to call us to a level of humility that frankly few, if anyone, has ever called us to. Some of you may know that years ago I was privileged to lead one of the congregations that became the Gulf Atlantic Diocese, and I felt very strongly that it was to be called Servants of Christ. So I guess you would say this is the high holy day for Servants of Christ Parish. My son Jake was 14 at the time. When he heard that I wanted to call the parish Servants of Christ, he said, Dad, that's a terrible name for a church. No one will ever want to go to a church called Servants of Christ. You got to know my son to understand. He always gave it to me straight. And yet, my conviction was that servant calling is the very thing that we needed to demonstrate to the community around us. You see, I, I omitted the first verse that I, that right there, the first part of verse 6, verse 5 rather, have this mind in you which is also in Christ Jesus. Some translations say have this attitude in you which is also in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to say, who in the form of God did not consider equality with God to be grasped, but emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. Brothers and sisters, we are called, as unpopular or as challenging as it might seem, to press into that call to be servants for Christ to one another and to the community around us. Now, the first thing I would say to you is that if you're going to do that, sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it. In other words, just be obedient and do it even if you don't really feel it. And it's amazing what obedience does to change our emotions and our feelings. But I would also say that more deeply, more importantly if you find yourself short on your willingness to go and serve those around you, go back to step one. Jesus has served you in the most profound way possible. I'm reminded that Luke's gospel includes a story of a of a Pharisee named Simon who Jesus goes to stay at his house and 
Simon doesn't offer to wash his feet. It was beneath him. And a woman, a notorious woman, comes up and she washes Jesus' feet with her hair. Do you remember the story? And anoints his feet. It's interesting that it's another foot washing story. And Jesus begins to tell a parable to Simon. He says, Simon, he says, he says, there was one man who owed 500 denarii and one man who owed 50 denarii and the master or the money lender forgave both debts. Who do you think loved more? The one who was forgiven 50 or 500? And Simon reluctantly says, 500? And Jesus says the parable's meaning. He who is forgiven much loves much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. Having loved his disciples who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.